Welcome to Coordination Chemistry. The aim of this pre-lecture video for week 6 is to revise some concepts that you learned in first year. Importantly, as we move through our lectures, a key skill that you need to have is working out the number of d-electrons in a metal complex. But first of all, Let's recall that coordination chemistry is concerned with the transition elements which have incomplete D subshells in either their neutral atom or ions. They were originally called the transition elements because their chemical properties are transitional between the S and P blocks. Note that the zinc triad are members of the D block but are not formally transition elements. Also note that the F elements are often called the inner transitional elements but we won't be discussing those in our course. Each group of d-block metals consists of three members which is called a triad, for example iron, ruthenium and osmium. The second and third row are the heavier d-block elements and ruthenium, osmium, rhodium, iridium, palladium and platinum are collectively called the platinum group metals. Let's spend some time talking about the basics of electron configurations of the D metals. Remember that the alkali group metals, potassium and calcium, these are elements 19 and 20, precede the 3D transition elements which start at scandium, element 21. The diagram on the left shows the relative energies of the sublevels in neutral many electron atoms in the gas phase. Here we can see that these relative energies increase with the principal quantum number n. As the n value becomes greater, the sublevel energies become closer together, which results in an overlap of some of the sublevels. For example, we can see that the 4s and 3d subshells are very close together in energy. In transition metal cations, these levels swap around due to their close energies, and the 4s subshell is actually raised slightly above the 3d level. This means that when ionization occurs, the 4s electrons are lost first before the 3d electrons. The diagram on the right is really just a memory aid that takes this into account and this arrangement of the sublevels can serve as a reminder to us of the filling order. So we read from the 1s orbital and we follow the direction of the red arrow. For example, we can see that when we write an electronic configuration, we follow this red arrow and we fill the 4s orbital before the 3d orbital. Here's a full table of all the configurations that are written out. You can see that the 3d orbitals are filled to give a sequence of 10 elements, the d block. There's no need to memorise this though, as there's a much easier way to work out the number of d electrons for a transition metal iron. So we can use a quick method to determine the number of d-electrons in a metal iron and this is simply the group number minus the oxidation state of the metal. So for example if we're asked to work out the number of d-electrons for manganese 2 plus we know that manganese is in group 7, the oxidation state is plus 2 so in other words there are 5 d-electrons. So these are the valence electrons that are located in the outermost shell of the iron, the valence shell. So first, let's recall the anatomy of a metal complex. A central metal atom or iron, which is a Lewis acid, in other words, it's a good electron pair acceptor, is bound to a number of neutral or anionic ligands. These are Lewis bases, that is, they're good electron pair donors. The coordination number of the metal centre is the number of donor atoms attached to the metal. Complexes can have between 2 and 10 donor atoms and sometimes more coordinated to the metal centre. But fortunately the great majority have only 4 to, or 6 ligands and we'll be concentrating our attention on these. In most complexes the ligands are at the corners of an octahedron in octahedral complexes and these complexes can be neutral or charged. Also just remember that we write the formula of a metal complex with square brackets. So here's an example of a metal complex. It's a cobalt hexamine complex with an overall charge of positive 3. In order to determine the number of d-electrons on the metal, we firstly need to find out its oxidation state. The relationship between the oxidation state of the metal, the charge on the ligands and the charge on the complex is given by this simple formula. So we want to figure out what x is. 
So for this cobalt hexamine complex, the overall charge is positive three. There are six amine ligands and each of those amine ligands is neutral. So in other words, we can work out that the charge on the cobalt center, which is X, is positive three. So we can use a quick method to determine the D electron configuration. And the number of D electrons is simply the group number minus the oxidation state of the metal. So for example, for the cobalt hexamine complex we were just looking at, the number of D electrons is the group number, cobalt's in group nine, and the oxidation state that we've worked out for the cobalt was plus three. So there are six D electrons. So in other words, we can write out the D electron configuration as 3D6. Let's do another example. So this is cobalt with six cyanido ligands and it has an overall three minus charge. So in other words, we firstly want to work out the oxidation state of the metal. And we can do this by remembering here that each of the six cyanide ligands has a charge of minus one. So in other words, we work out that the charge on the cobalt center is plus three. We can do another example, and this time it's an example with ligands which have different charges. So we have chloride ligands that have a one minus charge, and we have amine ligands that are neutral. So in this particular case, we follow exactly the same process. And now we determine that the overall charge on the cobalt center is plus three. So in fact, in both these examples, what we find is that the number of D electrons is six. So we would write the D electron configuration for cobalt in both of these complexes as 3D6, as we did for the cobalt hexamine. So the transition elements can exist in a number of redox states depending on the number of D electrons that they have. And we've just seen how to work out the number of D electrons. The two plus oxidation state is the most common because the two 4s electrons are lost first. So just remember that the oxidation corresponds to the loss of electrons and reduction to the gain of electrons. So that concludes our pre-lecture video. This week's pre-lecture quiz that follows is designed to reinforce and test your ability to calculate the number of D electrons in metal complexes. We're looking forward to seeing you in lectures.